Aloha, and welcome back to Physical Therapy for a Better Life. I'm your host, Christine Linders, physical therapist and board-certified orthopedic clinical specialist. Are you spending so much time pleasing others and doing for others that you're neglecting taking care of the most important person? You. In order to be of use to others and help others, your cup needs to be full. It needs to be full of love, energy, compassion, and purpose. Today, I'd like to welcome back wellness practitioner and licensed massage therapist Letitia Sharp to guide us on our journey to reconnecting with our true authentic selves so we can be more present in our lives, feel more fulfilled in our jobs, and experience more love in our relationships. Welcome, Tish, and thank you for coming back. Thank you, Christine. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited um, about our I, conversation today. This is amazing. And so like, I want to ask right away, what is home? What does that mean to you? Ooh, like, that's a big question, right? Because home can be something physical. It can be our house. Um, and I, I know so many times I've taught, I have a little one and I've taught her that home isn't necessarily where you are, it's how you are, and it's how you find a place in your own kino, in your own heart, in your own um, being, and being comfortable there. So I really feel like home is, what's the old adage, like home's where the heart is, home's where you lay your head, um, and really all that means, I think, is that it's where you are. And if you can feel comfortable wherever you are, then that's, that's home. I think that's amazing. And I just reached on my table. I have these little oh. heart, uh, coral heart that I found. And I love that it's a different shape. And I, I got one of these little um, tourmaline hearts. Uh, I'm saying the wrong turquoise? word. Turquoise? Turquoise, thank you. Thank you, turquoise hearts. And that is so true. Our heart, the center of our being is where home is. And I've heard from so many patients and so many friends during the pandemic on how they feel like they're, you know, not, not really running on a hamster wheel, but for lack of a better word, they just feel like they're just, they're just racing around and they're lost and they don't know how to find that contentment now that we've shifted and we're shifting back. And where is home? Where's your heart? And I love this idea of home is where your heart is, your true self, the, the person that you are inside. Like, what do they say? Who are you when you're by yourself at home with the door shut and no one's around? That's you. And so the world wants to, I'm giving myself goop ones. The world wants to see you. And this is a lesson for me too. That person, we want to see you in the world. And how do you find that if you've gotten on a different path of doing stuff for others always i'm guilty of it and neglecting to put yourself make yourself a priority so um the last time we talked we talked a lot about different tools and mindfulness and it really feels to me like there's all of these tools available to us to be able to really do that find our our Self, find out who we are, who are we, and how do we get that and live that actually in every day without being embarrassed, without being scared, without falling into fear. Um, and so, what are the tools, right? Meditation, we've talked about, uh, sound medicine, we've talked about. It could be a massage, it could be athletic, it could be. Um, it could be gardening, it could be creating a meal, it could be all, any of those things are the right answer. You know, you, there is no right answer if you truly are feeling that your heart's open. So I, I'm gonna go back to exactly what we talked about last time that we met. And it was find out what makes you feel alive, what's your passion, what makes your heart sing and do it, just do it, just do that and continue doing that and the people and the places and the things that are going to resonate with that energy they'll come to meet you there they will meet you there that frequency will find like frequency and um yeah so i guess that's it in a nutshell okay wow. show's over 
<laughs> yeah, I think you just you just drop the drop the heart on finding um finding home. No, that that's so true. That is so true. I know that anytime I've spent time with you or some of our friends have gone to things, little events with you, it's always just like, oh, I feel home. And it's about making time for you. And I have been making time for me the past probably this whole year more than normal. Not I love beach volleyball and I love to play beach volleyball, but I've actually haven't played in, in several weeks because I was making time for me to do kind of what I wanted, not on a schedule, because all week long I'm very scheduled. And so on the weekends, I would love to play beach volleyball. It makes my heart sing. But I just said, you know what? I'm gonna just take care of some me things. Like I want to wake up. What if what I want what do I want to do today? Not what did I schedule today? And I think that what you're saying is find what you love and do is find what you love and do. And the more you do what you love and the more you put that out there, those people that are on that vibration that are loving that surround themselves with you. And then your cup starts to fill. And honestly, it's kind of amazing how I felt the past couple of weeks. I made a comment to someone the other day. I feel so good right now and so inspired. I was driving to work that I don't know why. And I do attribute it to me letting me fill my cup by not being scheduled so I can have the availability to do the things that I love and doing the mindfulness. I've been doing it so regularly and so almost, I hate to use this word obsessively, but just regularly, consistently is a better word. And I even found one this morning. I went to the beach. I did a run in the rain and I listened to a meditation that popped up for me and I didn't even listen to it before. It said, the title today is going to be the best day ever. And it was the most amazing, like 11 minute meditation I've ever heard. So back to mindfulness to find home, start doing some mindfulness meditations. If it's like you said, walks and green space, friends. I mean, I love what you said. No, I think it's really, uh, it brings up a couple of points to me, what you're saying is, first of all, um, you are already in the space of inviting um, this amazingness, this high energy, the high frequency. And then the it, it even shows that it can come up in technology, right? Okay, boom. So they talk about algorithms, right? Well, it's you, we all have our own algorithms, right? So that's what that was. It was Okay, the universe stepped up and said, oh, you think today's going to be an amazing day? Guess what? It's the best amazing day ever. And listen to this. Somebody else knows about that, right? Yeah. And um, it's easy for you and I to have this conversation because we're in the practice of it, right? Mm -hmm. We're in the practice of doing that. We're in the practice of constantly being aware of finding our home, finding where our heart is. And I think it is really it's a big conversation for us to bring up how do you get there though like it's practice you know and it's not just doing the meditations it's not it's not just being mindful it's what are the actual physical things that we can do to get us there right how do we talk to ourselves differently inside of our heads i remember when i was gosh i think i was 24 or something i'm sure it had been a longer uh, experience that I had done it just when I realized it at 24 was people would be like, oh, you're so sweet or, oh, you're so nice. And inside of my head, I mean, I was saying, yeah, huh, if you only knew me, like if you only knew the truth, right? So that's how I would talk to myself. I had to retrain myself to be like, you know what? I am sweet. I am kind of nice, you know, I am to actually own that. And that's part of it. That's part of finding that home. Um, I was recently just at a retreat on the Big Island. And oh, it, was a, it was really powerful. It was a really profound experience. And it was with Kaoni with Fern Medicine. And Fern Medicine is a medicine of the emotions. So it helps you heal your emotions. And that was a big conversation. That's kind of what I feel like we all came out of that weekend with 
um, all 50 of us, is knowing that we always have a phone, a home, and a phone home. <laughs> <laughs> but we do, we always have a home, as long as we keep coming back to our hearts. And um, sometimes we can have everything on the outside that we need to be able to think that we should feel at home and we still don't feel it, you know? And why is that? It's because of that self-talk. It's because maybe we haven't trained enough. It's because of that self-love that we just haven't gotten a full grasp on and haven't connected to that higher love, that high heart that is that universal love that everybody talks about. So here we are at this retreat and I've got my mom and my daughter with me. So I've got my family, two of my closest people in my family with me. And I've coincidentally, haha, have three of my best friends with me. And then come to find out there's another half dozen people that I work with and that love me and respect me and hold me in high regard and um, share with me. So I have all of this external support, right? And to hear me talk and to look at me right now, it's like, oh, she's got it together. She's, she's confident, she's secure. So I put on my crystals and I get ready and I've got, you know, there was a color theme and I've got my favorite color scarf for the theme and I'm all dressed and I smell good and I feel good. And I go and I'm standing next to my mom and I'm like, oh gosh, maybe I shouldn't wear this crystal. Maybe I should. And I start, that's where it came in, right? That's where that spot comes in, where I started drifting away from home. And my mom looks at me and <laughs> she didn't scold me, but she said, Letitia, you put that on because it felt good. And you wore that because that's what you wanted to wear. Stand in it, be in it. Just stop and go and be you. You're amazing. And I was just like, oh, thank you. You know, she brought me back home. She brought me back to my huuvai. She brought me back to my home. She brought me back to my heart, back to my body, back to my soul. And thank God, because, you know, and I was really lucky. There were other people that expressed later in the retreat on the last day that, you know, they, they had those same feelings. And I never would have guessed that they had those feelings because they were just so strong in their convictions and, and how they moved themselves through the weekend was just so beautiful that I never would have guessed that they had doubts or insecurities, but we all do. Mm -hmm. And we all deserve to have support. We all deserve to be at home in ourselves. So that was really long-winded, but it was that um, was powerful. beautiful. I looked up because I had chills everywhere when you said that. I was like, oh my gosh, your mom, when she said that, that's that's the I'm getting them again. That's the guide right there to finding home is being yourself, expressing yourself, and being able to develop that self-love, whether it's your best friend or your mom or anyone that tells you, hey. That's you. You put that because you wanted to wear it. Now go be you. Like you do you. That's kind of what people say all the time. And I think the message, the message that I hear of in that brilliant, brilliant excerpt that you just gave was you need to work on your self-talk. And we're all so guilty about, oh, I'm late. Oh, I, I didn't get myself out again. Or, oh, shoot, I forgot to do this. And and those little um criticisms that we make of ourselves they they add up to us not feeling confident no matter how we look on the outside not feeling um full of love and love to give and love to receive and so the awareness that I want everyone to have today is to start listening to that inner voice and when you start to criticize yourself think about it for a second okay so Hmm, I'm running late again. What can I do to do better? Okay, like I'm going to leave 10 minutes early and I'm going to love myself for making that positive change because I'm aware. Or next time you criticize yourself about how you look, say, you know what? I feel good in this outfit. I'm the one that I want to look good for. 
So let me dress to please me, not dress to please others. And I think every step that we take, the language that we use towards ourselves, that we don't use that language towards others. We shouldn't use it to ourselves. We need Why? to love us, you know? I want people, good, good I want point. myself, I'm, I'm loving this journey I, uh, of finding myself and you helping everyone find their selves and their heart to have their best life and their best day ever. <laughs> So um, I think that that was a good point. And uh, a lot of times uh, therapists or guides have said this and there's meditations about it. It's about talking to, you know, to your, your young self and talking to that inner child is how it's coined, right? So how would you talk to a three-year-old? How would you talk to a seven-year-old, a 10-year-old, a 16-year-old who's going through all of the changes and the wow. uh, excitement and the everything? Like, would you speak to yourself with the same kindness? Would you speak to yourself with the same non-judgment, with the same curiosity? And if you wouldn't, I mean, I even just had somebody today say, you know, I just, I, would like you to be kind with yourself about that. And I'm like, you know what? I, I really feel like I am being kind with myself and I'm not judging myself, but I am reflecting and I am uh, recognizing what my part was in that situation. And I'm being kind with myself. I am finding grace. And then you talk about also the being late, like, okay, so <laughs> nothing <laughs> for me. <Okay>. And, uh, <laughs> If I'm late, I just need to be kind with myself. You know what? Urgency is going to take me out of that grace faster than anything. And that's another thing that I just made the connection um, with, thanks to a group of phenomenal humans <laughs> vibrating at a high level. Um, is that? And so when I feel myself getting urgent and like, oh, oh, I'm late, this has to happen. And all those feelings, I see myself and I feel myself just slipping out of grace. And I don't feel good operating in that space. So if I can allow myself to move with purpose rather than urgency, okay, I'm moving with purpose. Then everything just sort of starts to click and starts to fall into place. And that's that divine grace that we're all looking for is defined. And so you just allow that love to come in instead of, and help you with your purpose in your movement through your daily life. So, yeah, you, you said that to me the other day. I mean, you said it, I was just amazed again, because you were talking about two things, grace, and was it creativity? Innovation. It, grace and innovation. And those two words spoke so strongly to me the other day. And you said that, and I, I wrote it down actually, because you said when there's urgency, it takes you out of grace. And when there's something, it takes you out of innovation. Perfectionism. Perfectionism. And I get hard on myself with those two things. And I didn't even tell you that. And those were the two words you said when I walked in to see you the other day. And I couldn't believe it. And you know what? I left with such grace and mm -hmm. I have carried it through this week. And urgency and grace, perfectionism and innovation. And I love you and I both love to innovate, but we have to have grace and give ourselves room to innovate without being perfectionist and criticizing every little thing that's not what we deem to be perfect because it is perfect because it is our creation and grace everyone hear that word and Pookie's a pure version of her authentic self because she's been meowing I apologize this whole entire show but you know she got what she wanted <laughs> so there is a um a beautiful person Ivalani that made that connection and it resonated so deeply with me that I can now share it and help people, all of the people that I know, be able to make that connection too, because it's freedom, right? Isn't that freedom? Like if you know the cure, so like what she says is 
or what the connection that she made that I'm sharing with you is that the cure for perfectionism is grace. If you just had a little bit of grace with yourself to make a mistake or to not be perfect, that's the cure for, for perfectionism. And what is the cure for urgency? Take that urgency, channel it, make it be creative, you know, use that and find innovation, find that. And, and through that, you can have this mm, endless flow, this infinity as above, so below, all of the things, you know, that physical part, the spiritual part, the heavens and the earth, all mixing together as one. So it's, it is really, really powerful. That's great. So if, if, I'm watching this show for the first time and listening to us talk about all these things and finding home and our authentic self and wanting to reap the rewards of more in our lives by giving or loving more in ourselves with mindfulness and doing what we love. Is there like a way, like I am watching the show and I'm like, I don't know what to do. I know I have to talk better to myself and I know I need to but what, what do I, where do I start? Is there one place that you could give someone who is really like receiving this show, but just still doesn't know what can I do right now, this minute when the show ends to start finding my heart? Do you have something like that? <laughs> <laughs> you ask all the tough questions. Um, I'm going to say <laughs> off the top of my head and out of the depth of my heart to just start the conversation. Start the conversation. And through that, you're going to find out who was your people. Who are yeah. your people? Who can you talk to about these things? Who can you be yourself with? And then once you find that, and it's not going to be, as Keone says, pretty necessarily. Yeah. It's going to get messy, guaranteed. You know, because that's that's what it's all about is making a cake for the first time with frosting clean and pristine. No, it's messy. Throw a three-year-old or a five-year-old in the kitchen with flour and eggs and <laughs> batter and frosting and sugar. It's not pretty, but it's wonderful. It's yeah. creative. It's heartfelt. It's joyous. It's all of those things. So open the conversation. Find who your tribe is. Don't, um, don't be discouraged. And when the pain comes up, when the emotional pain comes up, see it as guidance, see it as guidance and exposure is good. Exposure is the key to, um, yeah, to finding that healed heart, to finding yeah. home there. And that's like a whole nother <laughs> exposure. <Woo. I> <laughs> yes. To being able to, I mean, you found those hearts because your awareness, your energy, your, all of that is, is focused on that, you know? It is, so. it is true. That's great guidance. And I think on what you're saying, what you focus on most, like you said, find your tribe, you find what you love and those people come into your life, what you focus on most manifests in your life. And it can get ugly because you're unraveling the deepest layers of yourself. But I know as I have asked myself questions, how can I be more of this? How can I find more of this? I have been getting people come into my life very randomly who are exactly aligned with the questions I asked myself that morning. Like, how can I have more ideas on this? How can I find a way to do this better? And then three hours later, a patient comes into my office that I'm seeing once because I've never seen her before. She's somebody else's patient, couldn't get in the schedule. And we, our conversation is exactly the question that I asked myself that morning. So any of those things, ask yourself good questions, ask yourself what you want. And it could be, how can I be more myself? It could be, how can I lose weight and like still enjoy eating and not feeling guilty when I have that piece of cake? How can I get myself to exercise for my health, even though I actually don't like to do it? 
And pretty soon you find yourselves with a friend who says, oh gosh, I hate exercising, but I really need to do it because the doctor said I have to. And now you're, you're exercising, but more you're having fun and, and asking joyful, thoughtful movement, yeah. just joyful, thoughtful, joyful movement. Yeah. Or even how about this one, right? So, oh, how can I be more forgiving or how can I, you know, do yeah. something like realize that those questions are great questions and they might you might attract somebody to you who's going to do something that you have to forgive <laughs> that's true that's right, right. so that's see true. everything <laughs> as a blessing see it all as a yeah. blessing and just growth and wonderment and moving forward so it is true this is um this is a journey i think i said when i was saying the other day the the one of the things i like to say and you so do this is helping people on their journey to wholeness and health and i think that this life is a journey with everything we go through right from being that that child like the whole world is open to having experiences that are uh, negative or harmful or injurious to you your heart and then becoming an adult and going through these ups and downs and this journey to keeping home because life is that journey for all of us to find wholeness and health. And this is what you are doing for us right now. And for myself and people do it for me, it's really just a matter of us all being in this together and um, definitely just finding, finding our tribe, opening the conversation. It's a beautiful conversation. I think that's been a gift of COVID. Yeah. is that there's more conversations about this we all became just oh, a little more aware right <laughs> yeah we did so we need to wrap it up is there anything to close that you would like to share with us uh i think just that let's yeah. open our hearts to conversation to finding people that resonate with us you know and that's going to be different for each one of us because we're all uniquely different and fabulous and fantastical. <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tish, for coming on to help us on our journey and to thank Tech Hawaii for allowing us to be here today. As always, life is better is when you listen to your physical therapist and your wellness practitioner. Aloha, everyone. <laughs>